LCM combined with Krita is just massively overpowered. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm gonna turn you into a master painter. Now you don't actually have to know how to paint. This is a combination of digital painting with the powers of AI. But before we get started, I want to show you something really cool. I have created three really amazing workflows that show crazy interesting concepts on how to use AI. For example, here we have an avatar generator that generates the same avatar with the exact same details, but different face expressions, but with a character consistency, because actually I'm using the trick that I'm using face detailer to change the emotion of the face. And on top of that, I'm also showing you in this workflow how I'm using randomization to create an endless amount of randomized automated prompt. So every time you click on the Q button, you actually get a completely different character with the same face expressions. Then here's another experiment I want to show you. This is really cool. What you can do here is that you can use a full size, full resolution photo, something you usually can't use inside of Stable Diffusion. And this is rendering this glitch effect over that image, combining it with the image. And the third one is again, interesting concept here. I'm using an image input. I love image to image. This is not using IPA, but it is using Allura to help a little bit with the anime style. This is a Kawaii pet creator. So up here you can put any kind of pet and then over here, it creates the pet that is similar to the input style. But because we are not using IPA, I can go further with the style and it is not gripping on to the character itself. So I can create a tiger, a unicorn, a bear, a cat, any kind of cute pet with this kind of workflow. Check out the link for my Patreon workflows right below this video. All right, so let's get started with the tutorial. And first, of course, you need Krita as a download. This is available, as you can see here, for Windows, for Linux and for Mac. It is completely free. It's open source software. So that is pretty amazing. Simply click here on the download button and then it will give you the installer you need or you can select it also down here. As you can see here, there's also a portable version if you don't want to install it. Although I would suggest to you to install Krita on your system. You need a version that is above 5.2. Maybe you already have it and you want to update it in that case. Then what we also need is Krita AI Diffusion. When we scroll down a little bit to the getting started section, you can see here this is supporting NVIDIA GPU, AMD, Apple M1 and 2, CPU and also Cloud GPU. If you want to render in the cloud, there's even a description here on how to set this up. Below that, you have the installation description here. Very easy. You simply download the plugin, you unpack it into your P Y Krita folder on Windows. As you can see here, this is inside the C drive users folder, username folder, app data, roaming, Krita, PY Krita. So you put that in there and then you open up Krita itself. Inside of Krita, you want to go up here to settings and then to configure Krita. Now, when you have that, you want to scroll down until it says here, Python plugin manager. Click on that and look for the AI image diffusion and you want to make a hook here to turn it on. Click on OK and then restart Krita. Once you've done that, open up a new document. In this case, I'm opening up a document with the resolution 768 by 768, but you can certainly try other resolutions. When you click on create, you can see here on the right side, you have the AI image generation. If you don't see that, you want to go up here to settings and then to dockers and then look for AI image generation, make a hook next to that. Now, the first time that you're using this. You want to click here on configure and this is opening up this window here. Now for you, it's going to say on the right side here, install, but 
before you click the install button, look down here on everything you want to install from the list. You don't have to install everything, but I would suggest that you get a good selection here of these different control net extensions for SD 1.5 and also SDXL. And then also you can download here multiple models like Realistic Vision, Dream Shaper and Chaganaut XL. Click on the install button when you have selected everything and it takes quite a while to download all of these different components. After everything is installed, you see here the green text that says installed for you in green so that you know that everything has worked out. I would suggest to restart Krita again after that. And then you can also select here what kind of GPU you want to use. In my case, it's the Nvidia GPU. When you're satisfied with that, you simply click here on launch. Once the server is running, it's telling you server running connected. Now, if you also have a ConfUI local install, make sure that that install is not running at the same time because otherwise you're going to get an error message here. Now, once this is running, you can see that you have several other sections here on the top left. And the first one is called styles. Now, when you go into styles, you have here the style words for your prompt and then also the words for the negative prompt. So you want to check that out because in the tab here on the side, you can only set the prompt area that is automatically set in here. So if you want to adjust a certain specific prompt, you might want to set this here and also for your negative prompt to set this up here before you start to create your generation. And of course, also you have here the selection of the different checkpoints you want to use. And when you have set up everything, you can save this with the plus sign up here as a style so that over time you can select different styles you want to use for your creation. Now that everything is set up, we have over here the AI image generation. It now looks like this. Here you have the selection of what you want to do. These are actually the styles that I have just shown you. There, as you can see, are 1.5 styles and XL styles with an icon to that. And then below that, you can set the prompt. The prompt in this case is only the description what you want to have in your image. Of course, you can also put style words in there, but there is no specific section here for the negative prompt because that is in the settings as I just showed you. Now, another important thing here is that you have here a brush icon. When you click on that, you can select between generate, upscale, live, and also animation. Live is going to be the LCM. Now you click on that to select that. And here you have a play button and you have also a recording button where you can record the animation of what you're creating. Now here below that you have a slider that says this is the strength and that is actually the denoise. So if this is at 100%, the drawing you do over here is not going to be taken into consideration at all. So set this to a lower value, play around with the values to see what is useful to you. Now, the interesting thing here is everything you have here as layers that is visible is used inside of the LCM generation or even the normal generation. That means you can actually use multiple layers without a problem. This is not just rendering the active layer. It's rendering everything that is visible. Now for describing how Krita works, it's actually kind of easy. You have here this color selector, but even if you don't want to use that, when you right click with your mouse, you have this selection palette here. And in the middle, you can see there is also a color select that is very useful. And you can also set up here the most often used tools. And even over here, you have the size and the opacity and the angle of that tool. So that, for example, we can use here our pencil. When I select that, I can still set my opacity and my size up here. And with that, I can, for example, paint here 
the background with this light blue. Let's go here with portrait of a beautiful woman. That's my standard prompt that I'm using for testing out things. Now it's already generating an image. I haven't even drawn anything yet. So let's go in here. As I said, the right click can help you to select the colors. And let's start, for example, to put something down here like that. Put some blonde hair over here. Let's go like this. And then we also put a face. As you see, like you don't really need any big skills here. I can see this is already creating something for us. Let's have here some blue eyes maybe. Let's see. Let's go like that. It's mind blowing how good I can draw with my mouse. Look at the amazing creation we get out of that. And this is with a strength of 51%. You can, of course, even go higher and then get something that looks even better. You see, if you go higher with the strength, the detail of the image gets better, but it also gets a little bit further away from what you have actually created as the image. Another cool thing you can do here is you have this button here. This is copy the current result to the image as a layer. Now that that is good for two reasons. First of all, you can make a quick backup up here that is saved as a layer, but also you can use this as a new input. And now I can go in here and for example, go like this and say, I want to have a blue shirt actually instead of a red shirt. So now she has a blue shirt. How crazy is that? You can also do an in painting here on the left side. You have the freehand selection tool. So I can go here, select that. And then as you can see, this is only selecting that part. So I can write here smiling. So I have a smile here now. And now again, I can put this with copy current result to the top. And now if I have my smile in here, I will check out all of that together with you in my upcoming live stream on Sunday. We're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye, my friends. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.